Hi, I'm Sterling Edwards. We'll spend a few minutes painting some grass. Now, if you're like me, probably either right now or in the past, you've taken out that rigger brush and sat there for hours and hours painting a little grassy shape of the rigger. It's not a bad way to do it if you're working on a small painting, but if you're working on a big painting, a big full sheet piece, for example, a 22 by 30, and you've got a 60-acre field with a barn in it, you can spend a long time sitting there with that rigger brush painting grass. I'm going to show you an easier way to do it in a way that I found really kind of uh, lends itself to a loose watercolor technique. It allows you to get in there and, and make the shapes very quickly and get out. It has lots of texture. You can vary the colors. And it just gives you a more natural look that just kind of uh, coincides with the rest of your painting. Now before I start painting the grass, let's take a look at some of the materials we're going to use for this demonstration. Let's go over here and take a look at the palette. I have an assortment of My Mary Blue colors. My Mary Blue is an Italian paint, very fine quality paint. And I have, a, these are all transparent colors except for Payne's Gray, but everything just goes from uh, almost like the colors of the, of the color wheel. I go from my yellows to my browns, blues, oranges, and greens. And what I'm going to try to do is, is put some color in this grass. So I'm taking a one inch flat brush, for example, let's put some still to grain brown. Now still to grain brown is a very clean, very transparent, very pure brown color. I use quite a bit of this because it's one of the cleanest browns I've seen as far as transparent goes. Let's also take some permanent violet bluish. Again, another very clean, transparent color. And let's take a little bit of permanent green deep. Once again, this is a very clean, very transparent color. I want to paint a field of grass, but I want to do it quickly, and I want the grass to have lots of color. So here I'm just setting up a color stage, more or less, for the colors we're going to use in this demonstration. So I've got the still to grain brown, the permanent violet bluish, and the permanent green deep. These colors, mixed in any combination, give you some very nice uh, earthy colors that add a lot of color to your landscape. Other things I have on my table, I have two containers for water. I have one for washing my brushes, and one is clean water, which I use for applying clean water to my paper. And I have a roll of toilet tissue. Now this has paper towel wrapped around it, it's an excellent blotter. If I've got a really wet shape on my paper, I don't want to put a wet brush on there because I'll get a big blossom, a big background. So I'll just take the brush from time to time and blot it on this, and it just kind of uh, gets the excess water out of the brush. You still keep the paint, but you lose the excess water. Coming over to my paper, this is a piece of uh, Fabriano 140-pound cold press paper. Very, very smooth surface. It's wonderful for painting uh, uh, watercolor landscapes. Can you get these nice velvety shapes, which I think are very attractive. It just has a nice feel when it dries. The, the paper is mounted on a piece of gator board, which is a, just a hard foam backing. It's mounted with plain masking tape. I didn't pre-stress the paper. I just take it out of the box and stick it right on the, uh, on the board with the, with the masking tape. Now, the brushes I'm going to use in this demonstration are brushes I designed. Primarily these. Uh, these are the Sterling Edwards blending and glazing brushes. They come in three different sizes. They're very stiff bristle. Uh, unlike most watercolor brushes, which are very, uh, very fine, uh, very soft bristle, these actually uh, have a very uh, bristly brush stroke. They're excellent for, for blending edges and losing edges. But when I'm painting grass in particular, these things work wonders because I can just lay the brush parallel to the paper and pull up some beautiful grassy shapes. So let's take a look at how this works. Let's start by painting just a, uh, let's do a small demonstration painting a, uh, maybe a marsh we got a lot of grass, maybe a little bit of water, and a distant tree line, and we'll put a sky above that. Let's have a pretty low horizon. So I'm just kind of just suggesting where my horizon line will be. I'm not trying to get too, uh, too in-depth in this, because this is a demonstration really how to paint grass. But we can suggest a few distant trees off in the distance. We'll probably do those with the bristle brush as well, because you'll see how to paint trees with it too. There's some more little trees way over here. All this up here is pretty much going to be grass and water, just marsh, uh, just have a nice uh, marshy look to it. So let's start by wetting this whole area up here where the sky is. And we'll use the bristle brush for that. In fact, I'm using the, the one and a half inch, the medium bristle brush, to wet this paper from the water line up. We're going to put a very quick sky in some distant trees. Then we're going to come down here and we're going to really start working on some grassy shapes. But let's just go ahead and get this behind us right now. So I'm taking some clear water. And I'm wetting this from the horizon line up. Now these brushes hold a lot of water. 
So they're good for blending, they're good for applying washes. There's just any number of things you can do with these bristle, these stiff bristle brushes. And they're a pretty inexpensive brush. They're, they're uh, very versatile. A lot, of, a lot of bang for the buck. And just to speed things up, I'm taking a little bit of cyan blue, which is a very pretty clean blue. And let's just put a sky in here. Using that same brush. You see I just put the sky in without even going back to the palette. That holds so much water, so much paint. It's very, very faint. Not a whole lot of detail in the sky. There doesn't need to be. We're just trying to suggest there's a backdrop behind all these other things that are happening. And as that dries, that will kind of even out and give me a nice, pretty backdrop. The distant trees, let's go to the palette and see if we can't do some color on those. Uh, we're going to take some steel to grain brown, which is a color I had previously mixed, only now we're mixing a much thicker variation of it. Very little water, mostly pigment. And we'll take some more of the green, the permanent green deep, and mix with it. So I get this very nice, rich, thick, earthy green. Now if you look at that palette, you see there's very little water in that paint. That's almost like melted butter. Starting right here at the horizon line, let's just pull up and suggest a few trees. Now let's go back in some more paint. And we just keep getting thicker and thicker as we go. Here I'm using the same colors, only much thicker. Now remember the paper's dry down here, so it's not going to run everywhere. It'll run up into the sky, but it's not going to run down into the bottom part of the paint, painting with the, uh, what we're going to suggest, all the water and the grass. So it's very easy if you paint an entire uh, backdrop for a landscape using these bristle brushes. Here I'm just tapping the brush, suggesting a few pine trees. That's a nice backdrop. Let's not spend too much time on that. So let's get down to painting some grass. That's what we're here for. To paint the grass, now this paper is dry. Now if I take these same colors I had, I've got the steel to grain brown and the violet and the green. I'm loading this brush up and I'm trying to make sure I've got a fairly uh, thick mix of paint. If you see my palette, you can see that's pretty watery. But we can deal with that by coming over here to the blotter and just tapping that brush. And we're taking most of that water out of the paint, out of the, uh, the paint and the brush. There's still lots of paint right here on the end of the brush. We're getting most of the water out. Now starting in the background, I'm going to lay the brush almost parallel to the paper and very lightly pull up on it. And I get these light little suggestions of grass. There's lots of little individual blades of grass sticking up and it's very, very light because we're looking off in the distance and things traditionally are much paler and much lighter in the distance. Now let's go back and do some more. Let's put a little bit of violet in it this time. Again, get the excess water out. Now I'll go back and start putting a few more grassy shapes. And if I lay the brush flat like this, the flat edge of the brush almost defines where the water line would be if there were little pools of standing water like you would see in a marsh. In fact, we'll probably put a few in just to illustrate. And you can sit there and do this as much as you want. Now I'm making these grass shapes pretty small because they are off in the distance. Now let's go back and get some more. Make it even thicker. A little bit of green in it this time maybe. Get the excess water out. Now let's come in and put some darker ones. Remember, as things come forward, they typically get darker. This is called uh, aerial perspective. The further away things are, the grayer they are, because there's lots of atmosphere between you and that object way off in the distance. Atmosphere has just trillions of droplets of water which gray things down. So we're just really trying to accentuate that, almost exaggerate that, by making the shapes darker as they come forward. It really creates that, that, uh, that illusion of aerial perspective in our paintings. These will dry back very light. All right, now I'm laying the brush with some much thicker paint. And again, I'm laying it kind of flat. And I'm not pressing down. If I press down real hard, some water will squeeze out the brush. I'm actually like just the weight of the brush almost rests on that paper. And I'm just very lightly kind of pulling up these shapes. 
And these darker shapes, when combined with these lighter, smaller shapes, does give the effect of uh, looking off into the distance. And let's do some more. It's a fun way to paint. I, I'm at the point in my life, I'm not going to work too hard on anything if I can avoid it. I'm, I'm at the point right now, I want to have fun, I want to relax. To me, this is enjoyable, it's fun, it's relaxing. And I'm not exactly working up a sweat doing this, but I'm creating a very nice little marshy scene in a, in a pretty easy to understand format using just a, cer a certain brush to get special effects. And if you go to my website, sterlingedwards.com, you'll see a lot of scenes where I've used the same technique in the foreground. You'll see some barns, you'll see some swamps, uh, just lots of landscapes. And if you look, you'll see the same grassy effect in lots of my pieces, because I use it quite often. It's the easiest way I've found to paint grass, and especially if you want a nice convincing uh, shape of grass. Now it looks like almost like a little water uh, kind of leading the eye through the painting. Let's put this down just a second, and let's get a smaller brush, maybe a half inch flat brush. Let's just make this a little more scene and put have some of the sky reflecting down here in these watery areas. So I'm taking a half inch brush that's clean, a half inch soft brush, and let's just put just a little little blue color. And it just kind of uh, kind of mimics their little reflective sky in the in the water. The trees that we have in the background can be casting just little reflections. I'm just using the same colors I had before, the greens, the browns, a little bit of the violet. And just casting a few reflections. Now let's clean that brush out. I'll take a Kleenex and wipe the brush off so it's barely damp and just go right across that little reflection. Now I feel like I'm kind of looking out across the marsh and there's a little bit of water and there's some reflective quality. All I need to do is add just a little reflection from these grassy shapes, like right here. Very lightly. And I've got a nice simple marsh scene. I might even scrape in a tree. Just a couple little tree trunks using the handle of the brush. It's a very simple little exercise just to illustrate this technique, but it really does work. Now when this dries, and I'm not going to stop and take the time to dry it now because you'll understand when you see me do this, but when this dries, you can always come back and add more dark on top of this. You can also take a, a beveled brush handle and put a few individual uh, blades of grass while that paint is still in a semi-wet state. It hasn't lost its shine entirely, so I can scrape in a few individual grass shapes in the foreground and really build this up. So this technique truly works. And uh, like I said, I, I do a lot of pieces where I use this same technique for painting the grass. In fact, the painting behind me is a Marcine. All of the grass in that painting and those background trees were all painted using the stiff bristle brush, using this exact same technique. So it truly does work. It's a great way to paint. It's a lot of fun. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you get a chance, be sure to take a look at my website, sterlingedwards.com. And while you're there, look at the calendar. I might be doing a workshop somewhere near you, and I'd love to have a chance to meet you. Thank you very much.